Hey everyone, I'm back with what should have been the main feature for the last episode and uh, also with another handful of stamps. <laughs> the daughter came by again today, but I'm not touching these yet because that will make me run over time again. So I just want to talk about this one feature. <clears throat> As it turns out, I wouldn't have been able to uh, get it into the last uh, into the last episode in a timely manner anyways because when I went to grab my notes for the show hope find the word file I couldn't find it anywhere <laughs> now I have been rearranging my folders and whatnot and so I looked in my WordPress uh, folder my IPDA folder my YouTube folder where I all I have articles you know uh, going for each of those I couldn't find it finally I downloaded a, uh, a program an app that will look into all look inside all the files not just look for file names and so I finally found it it the, the keyword was Neunkirchen or Neunkirchen and I found the uh, old document and what had happened was that Microsoft OneDrive it has um, an auto save feature and what had happened I I had written out a whole set of notes a whole set of notes uh, about this set of stamps but then I went on to after I completed that I went on to another project and what I always do is since I have Instead of setting up a new document with uh, uh, with the margins I want and the columns and whatnot, I'll just paste over an existing article or an existing file, and then you know save as a new document. What happened? I had put in a bunch of new notes over my Neunkirchen notes. And before I could save it as a new file, OneDrive had auto-saved it. So it had written over my notes. So anyways, I've gone back through the various websites and refreshed my memory, refreshed my notes. And here's what I have for you. This set of stamps from the Saar region. The Tsar, as we know it today, philatelically speaking anyways, was created in 1920. It had existed long before that, <clears throat> but then it uh, gotten broken up and distributed among Prussia, Bavaria, uh, Bavaria, and several other principalities and duchies. After World War I and the Treaty of Versailles, uh, the Tsar was... Uh, the Tsar territory was re recombobulated. <laughs> it was all put back together again and placed under uh, League of Nations administration. And that was for a period of 15 years. So from 1920 to 1935, you'll notice that the stamp says Tsar Gebiet which means uh, Tsar territory or Tsar region. But it was um, you know, more or less de facto a French administration. As you can see on the stamp, although Tsar stamps had started off with uh, overprints of uh, German stamps and were overprinted and surcharged in uh, Fennig and Marx, uh, a couple of years later, the French change the stamps to cents or centimes and uh, francs so you see these are in centimes and francs truth be told i don't know what gave them the audacity to do that <laughs> because this was a german region with german ethnic population german speaking people so anyways to this particular set this is a semi-postal set uh, Scott numbers B44 to B46 and semi-postal as you most of you know 
but for those who don't, a semi-postal set is also called a charity set. And besides having a rate for the for uh, mailing the postage for mailing a letter, it's got a second uh, denomination on it, which is a, a charity contribution. And in this case, that contribution was going towards helping uh, the victim, of, the victims of a disaster that happened in the city of Neunkirchen in 1933. Now, what happened in 1933? Well, as you can see uh, in the design of the stamp, it looks like a war zone right now, but that's not what happened. In the town, they have what's called a gasometer, which is just a large uh, natural gas storage tank to supply the residents of the city, the residents and the businesses that need it, as this was a big uh, coal and steel industrial city. This gasometer was 70 and a half meters high, 49 meters in diameter, and that's across it, not the circumference. 49, so that, that was a big tank. And it had a capacity of 120,000 cubic meters of gas. Although thankfully, if, if you can say that, on that day it was only at 13% capacity or 15,000 square meter, uh, 15,000 cubic meters. The, the details have never really been completely definitively uh, determined. But it seems that one of the workers was uh, repairing a pipe with a, uh, a flame cutter. While that did not directly uh, cause the explosion, it, it led to it. It created a, a, uh, a fire which then ignited, heated up the tank and caused a tremendous explosion that destroyed much of the town. 68 people were killed and injuring about 190 more, but destroying many, many, many uh, of the homes. In fact, 700 homes were left uninhabitable. Some were completely destroyed. Some were still standing, but uninhabitable. As you can see in these uh, stills from a uh, film taken at the time, a newsreel, the uh, destruction was considerable. The design of the stamp captures that destruction pretty well too. You see two men carrying a injured victim out on a stretcher. And like I said, what looks like a war zone behind them. Now a curious uh, kind of an ancillary uh, collectible item I found along with this uh, set of stamps was a cancel. This is called a Remembrance Cancel. You'll see it's got uh, the name Saar in there in the inner circle and Neunkirchen at the top of that. But around the outer circle, there is a, a, a message that says, Verwendet Wohlfahrtsbriefmarken. And that means use charity stamps. Since uh, the website I learned about this cancel says it is a Remembrance Cancel, that would imply that after the disaster that the council was created, right? While I don't have an image of one here, I have seen these councils with uh, a date of 1932. And the gasometer explosion happened in February of 1933. So it's just kind of a coincidence that the used charity stamps uh, you know, slogan came on a Neunkirchen uh, CDS. And there's only two cities that I know of that have these remembrance councils of this, Neunkirchen and um, Saar Louis, Saar Louis. And uh, so it's just kind of an inter interesting coincidence, I guess. Now, according to stabworld.com, there is a total of 29,000 sets printed. That is 29,000 of the uh, lowest printed stamp. That was the high value. The second high value was 
29,900 and the low value had a printing of 41,600. Those are fairly low numbers so as you can guess it's, it's not a real expensive set but it's going to cost you more than just a couple bucks. I find the whole SAR area interesting and the SAR region has a you know pretty interesting history uh, going back and forth between you know control of control by France Germany France Germany and that can that merits a whole episode on its own and which well gives me an idea <laughs> I will work on an episode of the stamps of SAR and I will get on that as soon as I can but first tomorrow I'm headed off to Houston my wife and I were trying to get a D7 visa for Portugal. D7 means uh, that's the designation for a visa for people who can uh, live off of their own uh, passive income. In other words, <laughs> my retirement, pension, my social security, whatever. We just got our FBI criminal background check in the mail yesterday. So tomorrow we're headed off to Houston and we're going to be at the... <laughs> Uh, front door of the visa application center bright and early Tuesday morning and we'll see how that goes <laughs> so I'll check back with you when I come back from Houston but until then this is Ted the talking stamp collector wishing you all happy stamping mm -hmm.